Hello, hello, Infinity here. It is 9.11 in the p.m. on May 4th in the Pacific. So 21.11, 9.11. And I was guided a little bit ago to bring up one of my more popular digital works um it's a really interesting piece and to take a look at it you can go ahead and go to my instagram at this point it'll be up as a grid post uh it's actually updated just a little bit from the original. The original is on my website, thekeys2create.com. It is also on the website Redbubble in my uh, art shop there called uh, Infinite Art. And the links are on my thekeys2create.com website. And so... I've been working on getting that to ready to post and then I was guided to get another Oracle card for this post and I finally was watching a couple of videos and uh, just kind of lighting candles and getting my space ready and dealing with cats and and as soon as I, I'm like, okay, like now, fine. I was just thinking about, um, a couple of people and how they're light workers and, um, it was just, they're light workers, you're light workers, or you, you know, it's just kind of this conversation back and forth about light workers with my guides. <laughs> And, uh, and then it was like, all right, let's get this show, you know, show on the road and pick up the cards and, oh, what time is it? And I look and it's 9.09 and I was like, oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> of course it's 9.09. Right when I go to pick up the cards and we're talking about light workers, which are nines or the nines. So I just got done shuffling some cards. This one card stuck out. It's card number 37 and it's the mirror. Other lives, past lives, dimensional lives. So we are going to read about that. It is the one right before Hidden Worlds, the very first card that I got. So here we go. The mirror, other lives, past lives, dimensional lives on page 108 and 109. We are the many born who move through time and space beyond the lines drawn by men. We dance upon the web of connection, <laughs> the web of connection and circle round thousand upon thousand upon thousands of times. You have been star and stone, flower and bark, deer and dancer, priestess and servant girl, wizard and serf. We move through forms, friend, not simply those of the human, but those of the elements. And when we turn and face all of who we have been, we can awaken little by little each piece of wisdom until we are whole and entered fully into this life to share what we were brought here to do you are now at this point of realization staring into the mirror it is as if each memory can find its way to the surface of your skin and you can connect with the multitudes who dwell within us. Your identity will not shatter. You will not fragment. Instead, you will become more whole, more complete, more present than, more present than ever before. 
Let yourself know the truth. You are earth and air and water and fire. You are priestess and poet, slave and revolutionary. You are experiencing this spectrum of events through lifetimes in this one life and you can now understand any vow you can sorry and you can now understand any vows or connections relationships or compulsions as they were formed within other times it is now time to assess which you can release yourself from and which must be honored and respected and nurtured this lifetime Many born one, your other lives are here in the hidden world waiting for you to remember, stare into the mirror and see all of who you are. Illumination, I am a dimensional being who has lived thousands of lives, all with their wisdom and lessons to teach. <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, I can't really, I don't know. I don't know this Oracle. I just started using it. This is probably the fifth card that I've pulled, but, um, to go with that piece, I, I, it's just perfect. It really is because when I look at it, I, I, I feel an odd reflection in it. It's got a very deep um, uh, it's got a very deep type of, of feel and everybody reacts to it pretty viscerally it's one of the the more intense pieces that that really gets people's attention um, so it's really interesting that it's come up with this with this card here, the mirror, other lives, past lives, dimensional lives. And, um, and yeah, when it says here, many born one, your other lives are here in the hidden worlds waiting for you to remember, stare into the mirror and see all of who you are. That's what I always tell people. It's not about learning things that's going to connect you to the truth of who you are, the truth of, of your soul story and your soul song vibration without it being tainted by energies that are not truly yours, which we tend to accumulate in these human lives. Um, it's it's so it's about remembering where we've what we already know where we've already been the different layers of what that is because if we didn't have that we wouldn't be here it's just as simple as that doesn't matter what our uh what our soul origin is the fact of the matter is, is that any light body, any light worker that's on mission, that's alive, incarnate at this time and for the last few decades and the next several decades, this is all seen as one time period for humanity. And anybody that's on mission in this blip of time here, these you would say like 50 years especially would be phase one of the awakening process for humanity. So these last like 25, well, especially these last, I mean, that's definitely when it started. Um, and, and even before that would be when the people were actually a, born uh, as the, when the light workers were actually born, I'm talking about the time period in which the awakening process really like got intense and, and, and the period of time in which this is going to be seen as one 
one whole phase in the awakening process for humanity. And this, we're in the, we're in the, the beginning stages truly of that right, right now. And more and more people are becoming aware and conscious of, Hey Gilbert, what you doing? Uh What do you do? Sorry about that. So the one thing uh, that we that we need to understand is the 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 need on our part to recognize that we have had many lifetimes and for many of us it's not just been here on this planet it's been on other ones too and and for some of us we can have co-current lives happening and really depends on how you how you associate and assimilate and where you kind of where you start from so without getting too deep into that <clears throat> there's a lot going on and that's why it says uh we are the many born who move through time and space beyond the lines drawn by men because it's not that simple to say just past lives because that doesn't en- encompass everything in in the multi-leveled way that space and time and light and and matter all come to together and how we interweave our our consciousness our our spark of life reintegrating into different places and 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 into different forms like it says here we dance upon the web of connection and circle around thousand upon thousand upon thousands of times you have been star and stone flower and bark deer and dancer priestess and servant girl wizard and surf we move through forms friend not simply those of the human but those of the elements and when we turn and face all of who we have been We can awaken little by little each piece of wisdom until we are whole and enter fully into this life to share what we were brought here to do. So as I always preach, there's a reason for you being here. There's a purpose to your existence you wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case we have prime missions and subprime missions and we have different people we're supposed to work on different things with and and we're truly just like very very at the very beginnings of coming together of of truly have to think about it like we're all on this mission on a starship and then we got attacked and all of our hibernation pods got disrupted and but they're in these chambers that can like drive themselves or or fly themselves and they go to the nearest star system, let's say, the nearest planet where eventually they open up and they, the people wake up and, but there's no recollection of, of any of it. And it's about just waking up and figuring out okay we don't we didn't this isn't like where we 
originated from there's something else going on what don't we remember where were we what was our past life and how did we end up here so these things if you've seen that type of story or heard of it like a science fiction movie or story or whatever um it's it's directly relatable to what it's like to to be here and to awaken to the understanding just to the under just to get to the part of the understanding that there's other layers to our existence as to why we're here and the more that we understand that and fully lean into it the more it's going to come together. It's like the magic, it's like the, the great magic book, the Akashic records, the blue nebula of who you are, who we all are. It comes from this one central hub of, of, of infinite self, uh, energizing because every single soul that's attached to it all throughout creation and so it's extraordinarily massive it's infinite and it's so multi-layered and it's so charged with all the souls that keep regenerating itself that it just it will go on infinitely there's it doesn't need anything else than the souls that all of the souls in all of creation if you just think of all the souls in 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 one snippet of time but as you, as you slice through the dimensions and the layers and the space and time and all that can be considered something with any type of soul or consciousness, which is such an extraordinary amount and, and number that it would take so long just to say it it would take so long just to just to to get through what the number is it's so big and so with that type of energy and that's why it's so perfect in its creation and it's that's why we're all fractals and we're all continuously um part of this ever moving and that's why energy never never dies it just transmute nothing ever ends it just shifts and 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 changes and transitions into something else so that's why I, I have you have to have the awareness and the understanding that that something dead to us here is just in transition it's just you know, it's just not that anymore. It is something else now. And everything is that. It may take long, the, what, what we perceive in our human bodies and our human perception and understanding from this low uh, vantage point, something taking a very, very long time to change or transmute to something else. But nevertheless, it will it does everything does no, nothing is constant in creation everything is ever changing and evolving and and it may not necessarily seem like that especially for our own selves but that is exactly what's going on and so the mirror is here to remind us when we turn and face all of who we have been we can awaken little by little each piece of wisdom until we are whole and entered fully into this life to share what we are brought here to do so once we get to that point then we can start to really see the like the the process and the journey of getting to the door getting to the gate and then the process of understanding that there's the door there the gate there and there's a lock and there's a key and there's our understanding of being conscious 
to use the key, to turn the key, to open the door, to walk through the door. And that is a process that is different for everybody. Uh, But the simple essence and fact of all of that is just that the awareness that all of that exists and that there is a process to go through and and whether it's short or or long or back and forth a little bit which it is for a lot of people and myself included in that because it's not an easy process. It's not, it's not so cut and dry. Everybody has a different experience with it. And that's why it's so beautiful and magical and, and unique and infinite in the nature and the structure of how this is all woven together and how it's it is that web of life coming together and um connecting us to ourselves see we have to connect to ourselves and i've talked about this a lot we have to connect to the true divine union And a lot of people see the ultimate divine union as like the twin flame or the soulmate union. And while that's great, if it's a true, um, if it's a true type of union, what needs to happen prior to that is the divine union with the self first or else nothing else is going to to work the pieces will not fit um that they will they will fall apart over and over and over again because they're not meant to stay that those pieces are not meant to stay together them they're meant to come together it's just like when you put literally a puzzle pieces that don't they look like they're gonna fit and then you try to fit them and you're like oh they don't actually fit but just the act of attempting for them to fit and working and kind of figuring out like no these actually don't fit that whole thing is a process in itself and um to be recognized for what it's it's showing you that you know let's just say looks can be deceiving that maybe what's on paper isn't necessarily what's going to work and it might look like it's perfect but it's not because it clearly they don't fit perfectly together and so they cannot be together you have to pull them apart again and go okay we're we're going to leave these two separate and we're going to continue on here and try to find other pieces that are going to fit with either one of these two so we can move we can move on to create the bigger picture here and but sometimes just the act of doing that moves everything around so they can get closer together so it's another thing that i like to say to people is um you know, sometimes we need to separate so we can have space to grow. So we can get closer to either ourselves or maybe each other eventually again. But if not, we needed to separate to grow no matter what. So that is has to be seen for... And that's in any situation. It has to be seen for for the totality of what that is, or else it's or else it's lost, and there's nothing for it to anchor to, and the and the experience is going to need to replicate itself again until it attaches and it and it and it forms the identification part, the a code inside of you that makes you understand. And this is why we have repeating situations, whether they're re- whether they repeat every 10 years or every 10 months or every 10 days, 
whatever it may be, whatever the situation is. Um, and a lot of them tend to be behavioral or, uh, with ourselves or, or involving other people in relationships because we're all needing to work these things out. Again, we need to separate so we can have room to grow. And that goes for also transitioning to going from being in a live body to not being in a live body anymore. And there's going to be a lot of that. And there has been a lot of that already in these last few months. And there's going to be even more of it, unfortunately, and uh it's just gonna make it so much easier if we can better connect and hold space for ourselves and for the people in transition uh as we move forward to recognize that we are in a mirrored and, and living a mirrored existence, we're projecting into this dimension, this reality, into these bodies. We're projecting a, a portion, a piece, a consciousness part of our soul. We're, we're in a mechanism to carry out and move through our life and existence and experience but there is a higher self that if we connect to if we give way to understanding um from a, a more satellite perspective of seeing yourself as the as the little robot figure and your higher self is the one with the controller. See yourself in the video game. A lot of people, oh, this is a simulation. We're in a simulation. No, we're not in a simulation. We are in a projection. Creation is a projection of of the totality of creational expression constantly replicating itself over and over again we as as conscious beings are a projection into a material dimension with hard surfaces and bodies to hold our essence and our consciousness so we're project we're projecting like i was saying that piece a piece of ourselves our soul into a body that is like the receiver for for where the the actual voice is coming from which is our our higher self our soul so we're receiving that here and it was always meant to be this way. But for the most part, this, this receiving mechanism, this, this tether of, of corded energy from that higher, higher self into our, into the, into this space, there's a lot of static there. There's a lot of in between these, there's layers and layers and layers of of energy and static and all sorts of stuff not to mention that this reality is really distracting <laughs> there's so much going on all the time and there's so much it's like I, I like to joke around like ooh shiny because there's so it's so tactile it's so it's just I candy all the time wherever you want to look and whatever you want to immerse yourself into in this in this world in this reality just you know nature and technology these days and I mean just pick a subject and off you go down a rabbit hole for who knows how long 
it's really easy to separate and to stay separated from the self, from the higher self, from the soul self, from from your spirit self, from the spirits around you, from all that energy, from the things you can't see that aren't tactile, but that we can feel. I was watching uh, one of the latest Joe Rogans, and he was like, you know, what if there's this thing that we can we connect to and that's what makes it so we get a phone call from somebody we're we're thinking about and he's like working this out and I'm like holy moly we're talking about energy here it's called energy Joe and it's psychic connection and it's telepathy and it's energy because if we could switch a flip you know how we can go oh from regular light to black light and everything looks different and then if you can add on, and it's kind of like the Matrix shows you, but in the movie, The Matrix, but it's it's not like exactly like that either. It's more just layers and layers and layers and cross sections and and just grid upon grid upon grid of of energy. Just so much energy everywhere. It feels like air. It feels like nothing's there, but there's so much energy there. And for those of us who are very connected to the to this matrix of energy, um, we can feel when it's gone, when that matrix of energy around us and touching us all of the time, where we're standing, where we're laying, where we're where we're um, sitting in our home, when we leave the house, when we're talking or connecting to people, when we're thinking about them. There's a matrix of energy in between everything all of the time. There's a matrix of energy in every body. And that's what makes energy healing um, possible because it's just a, it's a container of energy of different processes happening at the same time. But we can get in there and we can work with that. Um some of us can anyway and uh and every body can for itself it just needs to understand how that works and for the most part people are very detached and not fully in awareness and understanding of how all all of how that works and what can attach through energy and and the different ways that it's that that people people are barely grasping how contagion how virus transfers from person to person and how that type of 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 connection those types of connections are made and it should just be a a lesson a little bit of a lesson in how energy works because what we're talking about is energy but we're talking about it in in a practical sense even though it is a virus and and a virus is essentially energy people don't really break it down that way but then when you extrapolate from that and you say well if if there's that connection from person to person to person and one person can infect the other can infect the other can infect the other how does it truly work with energy then um and so an example would be let's say person a He goes to a healer, but it's not actually a healer. They're a dark magic person. And when they're working on, on the, on person A, uh, they're using negative energy. They're implanting, uh, attachments and, and all sorts of badness (laughs) and not good things. And depending on the level of this practitioner really will depend on what they know to do, how to do it, how deep to do it, what's attached to it, uh, the different ways that, that those energies can be traps and tricks and any type of dark energy is a promise to some type of level of evil. And this is why I've said for a long time now, you have to be really careful about who you go to when you're getting healings done because not every healer, massage therapist, life coach, anybody, especially if they're going to tap in with you, even a psychic, even a, even an advisor, 
um, can be very much into the dark side of, of energy and magic and all that. And, and once you, do, once you start working with them, you're creating, um, energetic bonds and types of contracts and promises and, and people like that, they, they're, they're, it's a very, um, dark and codependent type of relationship. Now, again, there's levels to all of this, but anyway, without going too far into all of that, so let's say person A, he has this situation. He sees a, a healer who's not really a healer. He does some um, negative force, negative charge energy work on the person. And, and then that person A is energetically attached or becomes energetically attached or there's an attachment to somebody else that's already there and let's say that's a negative charge attachment that happens to be with somebody else and this third party energy that came around this this dark energy can very easily filter through the channel to another person uh and and it can just kind of move this way. And it can cause all sorts of negative energetic loops within people and their relationships. And, um, and I've, I've, I've been on the inside of this. I've seen it on the outside. I can see it with people and, and things that, and especially now, uh, when light workers are really starting to, to get upgraded and get downloads and get pulled towards healing I've seen a lot of a lot more activity than I used to and it's just because it is time it's like it's like the sun is rising and people are waking up well when that happens not only you can see better but you can be seen better and so those on both sides of the aisle of the light or the, and the dark are going to be able to see you and you have to be more vigilant now than ever into discerning and discernment as to what and who you're dealing with and and how to go about your the responsibility to get yourself as clean and clear as possible. And if you've worked with anybody who has done any type of, of witchcraft, any type of dark magic, any type of, um, any type of spells, like anything like that, that is all the simplest way for me to put it. The way it was put to me was, um, by my guide specifically, and all I work with is the light. So what the way that it was put to me to, to really bring it home and to make me understand is any kind of work with, with any type of dark magic is a promise to the dark side. It's a promise. It's to, it's a tethering and a promise to continue to use and tap into that energy and it's also an open door to come and take your energy so if you consciously accept help from somebody who is is practicing dark magic dark dark energy dark that uses dark magic um that says that that there's spells for archangels and they do they'll do incantations and they'll you know charge you for spells for with with archangels or whatever like all of that is dark magic there's no such thing you don't need a spell to work with an archangel you don't need anybody to work with an archangel you just need to talk to an archangel and there you go um and people, and so I've seen that. So there's, so, so some people are very open about it. I do dark magic and this is what I do. And these are the spells that I do. And this is, if you want a love spell, if you want a revenge spell, if you want to, if you want this, if you want that, and they do all this stuff, I would stay the hell away from people who do anything like that because they're tapping into, and it works a lot of the time, but 
you're tethered in a way you don't want to be tethered to dark energy. So if you have any type of um, association with this, or relationship with this, or history or experience with this, the advice is to detach and clear yourself. Go to somebody who's definitely of the light. Uh, I would recommend me. Uh, to help you clear and heal yourself from these attachments and basically sever these, these energetic cords. Not everybody is qualified or strong enough to do it and work with and work in that realm to take care of a situation like this. This is also when you'll have like, neg you'll have, um, negative attachments, or you'll be dealing with people who have also a lot of negative attachments. You'll be dealing with probably more um, just things just being more negative uh, because of this. You'll feel a lot more, uh, what's the, um, there's kind of a, like a loyalty type of type of thing when it comes to that. I'm not using the right word, but it's just this, it's this weird like possession type of thing that, that can happen as well. Um, so, and even if you haven't had this type of, of situation or experience, uh, just think about anybody who may have given you a massage or energy work or done any type. I mean, I'm not like, unfortunately, people, not everybody who says that they're a healer are healers, okay? And a lot of them are are bad people in disguise and because they wear a certain outfit and a certain costume and they talk a certain way, they get people who are looking for that to trust them and then they do some really jacked up shit energetically and it can last for a long time. They can, they can use you to experiment on. I've seen a lot of this take place and I get it on a level that most people have never even heard of. So I'm talking about this for a reason. If you can relate to this in any way, if you went to somebody and you had a painful healing it, it and it wasn't painful in the sense that it was and ex because expanding and evolving is not always comfortable. So the body's going to go through uncomfortable reactions to transmutation. I'm not talking about that. Like it hurts when our heart chakra expands. People will end up in the hospital because they think something's really going wrong with their lungs or their heart. And it's really just, they'll, they'll check them up and down. They'll be like, there is literally nothing wrong with you. And it's their heart chakra. But they don't check them for that. That happened to me myself, so I understand this. But then there's times where you'll go to get a massage or or see a Reiki, somebody who does Reiki or, or general energy work, and you'll be m way more tired afterwards. You'll be sore in those areas. Um, you'll need several days to recover. Those areas might even be bruised. You might have really bad dreams after. Um, be uh be argumentative or angry or need to be by yourself be extra depressed be sad like any of these things anything that is of the negative nature after you see a healer on that type of level is just really an indication that something is not right so please take a moment to map yourself back and and identify where there may have been something there and see if you can take care of it on for yourself if not again like i said not everybody can see things for what they are understand things they can there can be a lot of negative attachments and entities that play tricks on you make you think things that aren't true um, make you think that things are, are, are certain like level of light when they're really not. Um, 
and all of that. So I would just say, if anything, just follow, follow your, you know, your internal guides and compass as best as you can to take care of yourself, to stay safe, to clear and heal yourself, um, as, as much as you're being guided to do want to remind everybody that for every uh every appointment that I'll ever set with anybody we have a a session a consultation evaluation session that I do prior to any booking to talk with my my potential client See what's going on and make an assessment, you know, ask questions, answer questions, and then do a mini healing, a mini clearing, really not a healing, but a mini clearing of energy tapping in just so we can see, just so you can see for yourself what it's like to, to work with me and on a very superficial level and how, how much difference that makes. And again, that is a free evaluation. It's prior to booking anything with me. You fill out a questionnaire and then we schedule, we schedule an appointment for a consultation before any, before booking any session. And so I would suggest that you do that. If anything comes up and you need it and, and you want help with that. And even if you, if you're like, nope, don't have any of that. I'm doing great. I'm fully healthy. I'm in fact, I've leveled up a lot. I'm connecting better than ever. I, and you know, whatever, then great. This is, there isn't a better time to, to really cut off a lot of the, the fat energetically. And because if you haven't, gone through something like what I do, there's going to be energy attached that doesn't need to be there. And this will just get you so much closer to neutral in your body. It'll be sensitive at first because the buffer will be gone, but you'll be able to feel what is you and what is other people so much better. And you'll be able to connect with your, with your, um, with your soul and your guides and your higher self and all that so much better. So, uh, on, on either side of it, this is something that, that really anybody and everybody should seriously consider for their overall well being. um, energetically, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, all of the above. It's all one big system that works together all together. And again, taking it back to the mirror and our connections to our, our different existences in, in, in where we, where we are with, uh, what does it say here? Other lives, past lives, dimensional lives. Uh, the more we can connect to all of that, the, the leaps we'll take forward and upward and rise. All right, guys, it is exactly 10 PM, 2200 here in the Pacific going strong for 48 minutes, eight seconds. I'm going to leave us here right now infinite love and blessings. Don't forget the key is to create. I love you already and always live in love. Bye guys.